We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal... Amidst the height of the space race between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, Zambia, a small country in southern Africa, got independence in 1964, and apparently, one of the first things Zambians thought was expected of them was to beat these two superpowers at their own game. The Zambian director of the National Academy of Science, Edward Makuka Nkoloso, had big plans to land Zambians on the surface of the moon, but for Mars, his plans were even more ambitious. Makuka wanted to establish a Christian ministry to the presumed primitive Martians, for which he was sending a spaceship containing a specially trained 17-year-old space girl, two cats, also specially trained, and a missionary to Mars. He graciously warned the missionary not to force Christianity on the people of Mars if they didn't want it. The participants of the program were called Afronauts, a term he coined himself. Makuka was sure that the success of this program would prove to be an important step in making Zambia the controllers of the seventh heaven of interstellar space, and would show the world that Zambians were inferior to no men in space technology. It's difficult to say how serious he was and to what extent the Zambian government was backing him, but for Makuka, it was no joking matter. To train the Afronauts, a makeshift facility was created where trainees would be rolled down a rough hill in a 200-liter oil drum to give them the feeling of weightlessness in both space travel and re-entry. In addition, they used a tire swing to simulate weightlessness. The rocket, named Dikalu, was a drum-shaped vessel made of aluminum and copper, and according to Makuka, was space-worthy. The planned launch date was set for the 24th of October in 1964, Independence Day, but it was purportedly denied permission due to being inappropriate. Makuka went as far as asking the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization for a grant of 7 million in Zambian pounds to support his space program, a response to which he never got. It is also said that he requested 1.9 billion from private foreign resources. But to Makuka, a lack of resources wasn't the only hurdle. The bigger problem was his boys who were losing focus. He complained that there was too much lovemaking going on in the headquarters where they were studying the moon. Makuka suffered a major setback when his space girl, Matha Mwamba, got pregnant and his parents took her away. The angle has landed. That's one small step for man. Makuka's hopes were shattered when the U.S. landed in space in 1969 and his boys left the Space Academy out of despair. His space dreams died a natural death and got buried with him in 1989. Nevertheless, Makuka saw a huge dream in situations where people fight for basic human necessities and tried his best to make that a reality. Makuka is an inspiration to the Zambian population.